please break this vector into components. We need to draw our right triangle, which uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse, and which, uh, where the legs are parallel to the axes, and we'd like to include this angle in that. So by the way, this is a right triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse, uh, and where the legs are parallel to the axes. But it's not really the best right triangle we can draw, because it doesn't include this angle that we were given. So this is a right triangle, but it's not the best right triangle you could draw because it's not including the angle that we were given. It's better to be more conventional and include the angle that you were given. So even though you could use this right triangle, because it's not too hard to figure out what the angles are inside here. It's not too hard to figure out what the angles are in this right triangle, but it's more conventional to draw the triangle using the angle you were given. So let's stick with the conventional wisdom. Here's a right triangle that also uses the hypotenuse uh, uh, for the overall vector and where the legs are parallel to the sides. And this is superior to the previous triangle because it's including the angle that we're given. So when you draw your right triangle, you can usually draw it either above or below the overall vector. Your right triangle could be either above or below the overall vector. Well, try to put the right triangle in the place that will be including the angle that you were given. That makes the problem a little bit more straightforward. I hope that you're definitely in the habit of always putting arrows on the components. That, that's really a key step. Well, the overall vector was pointing down and to the left. So the components are pointing down and to the left. And I hope that you're in the habit of always labeling the components. This should be the x component because it's parallel to the x axis. Notice you have to keep using the axes that I'm giving to you. Maybe uh, on your problems you can choose your own axes, but now I'm in control and I'm choosing the axes. So you've got to stick with these axes until I say otherwise. Let's asterisk the side we were given and the angle that we're focusing on. We usually focus on the angle we were given. If we wanted to, we could focus on this 70 degree angle down here, but that's not what people usually do. Hypotenuse and the adjacent side and the opposite side. So to find the adjacent side, we would use the hypotenuse. And we use sine or cosine. Well, cut. The cosine gives you the adjacent side. And our angle here is 20. Our adjacent side is f sub y. I hope it's automatic now that you're putting in the dot because that's a length. The hypotenuse was 5. Still the dot, still the same variable. 5 times, co times cosine 20 is 4.7. Because this is a magnitude, it would be uh, not correct to indicate a sign. Magnitudes are always positive, so there's no point in indicating a sign. But then we're not done until we've shown the signed component. Here's the variable uh, for the signed component. Well, the magnitude is still 4.7, but now we have to figure out the sign. Up is in our positive direction, but f sub y is pointing down, so that's a negative component. Negative 4.7. Now onto the opposite side, using the hypotenuse. And so, to get the opposite side, you would use the sine of the angle, which was 20. The angle was 20. Now, our opposite side is f sub x. But since we're doing trig here, we just use the length of f sub x, or the magnitude. So we have to put in the dot. The hypotenuse has a length of 5. And the sine of 20 still has to be dealt with. We're still looking at the magnitude of f sub x. 5 times sine 20 on our calculator is 1.7. Remember, you can do this in one step. You don't have to find the sine of 20 and then multiply it by 5. You can just type in 5 times sine 20, enter, in one step on your calculator. This is the magnitude of f sub x. Now I'm going to write the variable without the dot to show that now I'm going to figure out the sine component. Well, we've chosen right as our positive direction. 
but f sub x is pointing left, which is the negative direction. You can see how crucial it is to put the arrows in on the legs. If you don't put the arrows in on the legs, you can't figure out the sign on the, on the component. This problem actually introduces uh, a real important point. Uh, if you look back at the previous examples that we've done, uh, I think that each of uh, the, the latest previous examples that we've done, we always found the x component using the cosine. If you look at the last few examples, we've always found the x component using the cosine. But is that what we did here? Well, no. Here we found the x component using the sine. Even though we usually in the past have found the x component using the cosine, in this case we found the x component using the sine. So this is an important warning. Um, a lot of people um, start to think that x components always come from cosines, but that's not true. It's true that in most problems, usually, you'll use the cosine to find the x component, but it's far from 100%. You will definitely see problems where you need the sine to find the x component. So you can't just memorize x means cosine. Um, instead, you have to work out what the right way to solve the problem is based on the details of each problem. Similarly, we usually use the sine to find the y component. In our previous examples, we used the sine to find the y component, but here we used the cosine to find the y component. So uh, it can go either way. Um, what's always true is that you always use the cosine to find the adjacent component, and you always use the sine to find the opposite component. So is always correct. Sine always goes with opposite, and cut. cosine always goes with adjacent. Um, but the adjacent side is sometimes the x component and sometimes the y component. It's true that usually the adjacent side will be the x component, but on this problem the adjacent side was the y component, so you can't assume. It's true that usually the opposite side will be the y component, but on this problem the opposite side was the x component, so you can't make assumptions there. Alright, so we always use the cosine to find the adjacent side. The adjacent side is usually the x component, but sometimes it is the y component, as it was in this problem, so you have to pay attention. We always use the sine to find the opposite, um, the opposite uh, side. Sine gives us the opposite side, so the opposite side is usually the y component, but not always. There are problems where the opposite side would be the x component, uh, which is what happened in this problem. Uh, so stay alert and uh, work with the details of each problem. Don't assume ahead of time uh, that you're going to be following the usual pattern.